Shalom. I want to give all the praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachakodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the house of David. Those men that are doing his work in sincerity and truth, and much love to you, 130 believers across the four corners of the earth. To you all, I say Shalom and greetings. The nation of Israel, to you all, I say Shalom. Uh, Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. All right, so uh, as you can see, I have the title here something along the lines of uh, Dirty Laundry. You know, the Lord is about to expose everybody, man, to to put it plainly, you know, and I, I mean, everybody save the elect because the, I, I've I, and I just had this thought just now. The Lord has had us come forth with our wickedness by doing away with it. Right. We've come into a state of repentance to where we uh, we don't no longer have any laundry so to speak, dirty laundry that's hot, that's to be hid. And I'm going to go into that terminology in a, in a, in a moment. But um, we don't have anything that needs to be hid. Of course, and we're not perfect. No man is perfect uh, as far as uh, sin comes. Because the scriptures say, if we be say that we be without sin, that we are liars. But those high level things that men are doing that are wicked, you know, uh, such as like the things that... Um, you know, Brother Polite is being allegedly convicted of right now. You know, well, allegedly convicted is probably a uh, oxymoron, but that he is being, um, you know, that they're trying to uh, convict him with, you know, with those allegations. You know, and I, we're starting to see the downfall of all of these people, man. We're starting to see the downfall of the so-called conscious community. We're starting to see the downfall of um, uh, these false Israelite camps. We're seeing the downfall of these Christians. We're seeing everything fall. So, you know, we go into saying Babylon has fallen. Hey, those all those different people, they're part of that brick and mortar, too. They're part of that that piece that needs to come crumbling down in Babylon because they are part of upholding this uh, crazy, lunatic, wicked, strange society, man. All right. They are they are condoning and helping the behaviors of these things, man. And so we're starting to see them being torn apart brick by brick and falling apart, man. You know, just like IUIC has their uh, logo with the, uh, and it's ironic that they have that. They have the bricks on the wall that says like IUIC, um, Israel United and, uh, you know, <laughs> and the C word. <laughs> that's almost, that's worse than cussing saying the C word. But now nah, we know that simply means anointed, but they put power in that name. But their their ending theme or when they start a, a footage or when they end it it has that thing crumbling down and that's what's exactly going to happen to uh their organization and these other people's organizations you know and so their dirty laundry is getting aired out and so uh that I, i'm sure that's a term that most people are familiar with but i went into a little bit of i wanted to see what was the history on it right and so supposedly it started in 1867 it was a french proverb and uh i i don't I'm not an expert in French, but I'm going to try to speak it um, how it says. It says, Il faut avoir son lingue salé en famille. So, which means like, uh, it's supposed to mean um, don't wash your, your, your laundry is supposed to be washed at home. Or your dirty laundry is supposed to be washed at home. Which really goes to meaning things that are private are supposed to stay private or things that are uh, you don't want everybody seeing your dirty laundry. See, that's why I had a clothesline one, because, you know, right now we have washers and dryers and things like that. But there was a time when you had to. And I remember my parents and my grandparents used to do this like when I was young. Uh, my grandparents, my grandmother's from Louisiana. So when they would have to wash and dry something, they would wash it by hand and then they would hang it all on a clothesline. Right. But let's say, for instance, um, your child had an accident. Right. A uh, bed or bed wedding accident. And you go and clean the blanket or clean the sheet. Sometimes when the sheet is uh, clean, it might take multiple washes in order to get that stain out. Right. So those sheet will be out there. You got a, a piss sheet hanging in the middle of your, your, your yard. So if somebody drives by, they're like, ah, damn, somebody pissed in the bed, you know, and something like that. So or you got dirty laundry and. You know, you got a, a child or an adult who haven't uh, uh, they can't hold their balls and they're shitting in their pants. You know, you wash it and the stain doesn't quite come out. Right. So basically, people are becoming aware of the things that you thought were private matters. 
So now, basically, it's a metaphor for you being aired out for the things that you thought were private, that you thought was private. And that's exactly what's going on with all of these different groups. Their mind state is that their things are private and that uh, they're they're not going to get sought out. But the scriptures say your own sins shall be your accuser in that day, man. You know, so I'm going to get a, get a few precepts. But that's exactly what's going to condemn these people, their sins, their wickedness. And the Heavenly Father is showing uh, who he's dealing with. All right. And that's starting with the apostles and elders of Great, Great Millstone on down, man. All right. Uh, let me start with this. This is Ezra. Chapter nine and six. You know, and this is a prayer, but it's a good precept. It says, um, and said, oh, my power. I am. A sh I'll start at five. And it says, and at the evening sacrifice, I rose up from my heaviness and having rent my garment and my mantle, I fell upon my knees and spread out my hands unto the Lord, my power and said, oh, my power, Yahweh, I'm ashamed and blush to lift up my face to thee, my power, for our iniquities are increased over our head and our trespass is grown up into the heavens. And so the Revelation um, 18 chapter goes in on that as well. It says your sins have reached into the heavens. And that's what's happening with the two thirds of our people, because our sins, we're confessing those uh, uh, to Yahweh by Shemiah Shai. We're telling them the things that that's wrong with us and the things that we're asking to fix. But these people are slack to repentance. All right. They're they're slack to come back. They don't want to come back to your house by Shema Shah. They loathe his law. They want to continuously be wicked. All right. And many of these men that know they're Israelites and they're just uh, being rebellious. Like Sarnetta. Sarnetta knows he's an Israelite. He does, man. He can say whatever he wants to. That man knows he's an Israelite. And that's why he speaks the way he says uh, he, he says something. Uh, he mentioned dirty laundry, too. Actually, I was just watching this video that just a brother has shared it. But um, and dirty laundry made me remember I, w I was talking to the brothers maybe a week or so ago and I told him I was like, hey, dirty laundry. That's the name of a, a video of a lesson, you know, and so he reminded me like, oh, and it was perfect. You know, it was perfect because he's going to get aired out, too, man, regardless of it come through this polite situation or another way, man. You know, the Lord already uh, smote the man with AIDS, HIV AIDS, you know. And so the Lord is going is coming to jack you people up because y'all want to keep being rebellious. You want to keep being wicked and you want to do what you want to do. You know, he's on there uh, defending that woman who's always on there in the pa. Hey, that's what he said. He said, like, yeah, to the, the, the holy people or the chosen people or something. He said to that effect. He knows he's an Israelite, man. That's why he be pulling out precepts just like those. Uh, um, um, those Muslims be doing, man. They pull out pre delga Farrakhan, always referring to the Bible, right? The only time we refer to the uh, Quran is to tell you that it's not the Bible, to tell you that it's not righteous, that it's not the word of God. That's the only time. But they refer to it as because they know the prophets come out of the nation of Israel, according to Amos 2 and 11, man. Okay, but let me read this. This is Psalm 6 and 10. It says, let all mine enemies be ashamed and sore vexed. Let them return. Let them return and be ashamed suddenly. And all of you people have turned into our enemies, man. All right. And, and you're going to be punished for that. And it's because you're not just our enemies. You're enemies of the heavenly father and his son due to your ways, man. OK. And so he says, uh, let them all be ashamed and sore vexed. And because we've been uh, we we ashamed at your actions, man. We like, God damn. And these are supposed to be the Israelites. And look how they acting. You know, but the Lord is not going to leave that burden upon us. He said he's just going to destroy you, man. You know, like the apostle said, man, if we had to save all the goddamn Israel, man, we will never get out of here. We will never leave. Right. But that's not the case. The Lord said it's for a remnant. He looking for that remnant uh, to, uh, that he said a remnant shall return, man. A small amount, a small sanctuary is going to return to the heavenly father. The rest of y'all going to keep being wicked. This is Psalms 25 and 3. It says, um. I started to unto my power. I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me yet. Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed with transgress without cause. So y'all transgress without cause y'all sin and y'all don't even be having to you sin because you want to sin. You want you. You want to be wicked, man. You enjoy being wicked. All right. It's a thrill for you. You know, I saw a dude earlier say. Now, granted, 
I'm not even going to say it like that. This dude was wicked for his statement. Um, he said, um, I'd rather, di- cha- I'd rather deal with a woman who's got a man because at least, at least I know she's only having sex with one guy besides me instead of a hundred. But that was wicked as hell. Now, do I get the sentiment that majority of these women are wicked out here and that you don't know who the hell they're dealing with? Yes, I understand. But you don't go and become exactly what you hate. He became a, a man. If you got a woman and your woman is dealing with somebody else, her having that opportunity to deal with somebody else, hey, even though she's a demon, that's still an outlet for her to go to. And so you don't become what it is that you hate. All right. Because I guarantee of all men were denying women that were in relationships, we would be in a situation that's a little bit better off. But we know that's not going to happen because majority of the world is wicked as all hell, man. Majority of them. We, and we have to understand that majority of the world is wicked, man. If you're not part of the elect, you're wicked. And Lord willing, we be at that number, man. But that, that's all it is, too. And you people are showing, showing your signs and you're showing your ways. And you're showing uh, us and you're showing your how about Shemiah Shai. That you are fit for destruction. And that's it, man. Psalms 40 and uh, 14. It says, let them be ashamed and confounded together that seek after my soul to destroy it. Let them be driven backward and put to shame that wish me evil. You see? So y'all wish us evil. Y'all y'all, y'all hope bad things going to come upon us. Y'all, y'all say, uh, how did he make it among a lot of the saints? All right. Y'all, 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 come, y'all be together on this, on y'all missions, man. Sarnetta, the conscious community, all right? You even got uh, Captain Tazariak and uh, all of them other cats over there gung-ho with you, bumping shoulders, like y'all all together, man. But y'all are, because ain't none of y'all doing what the Heavenly Father asks or required you to do, right? And that's why the guys like Captain Tazariak is taking the jab and influencing other people to get it. But when you people start falling by the wayside, man, We're going to look at you and we're going to laugh. All right. We're going to shake our heads and we're going to see y'all. Y'all showing the fruits of y'all wickedness, man. Okay, and so sort of let them be driven backward and put to shame. So y'all think the bad things are going to come upon us because y'all slander us. All right. The the, the scriptures say we shall be blameless in the eyes of the people, man. At the end of the day, they try to persecute us just like they try to persecute the Lord without cause. We blameless at the end of the day, like we're doing what the Heavenly Father has asked of us and nothing else, man. So anything that y'all try to put on us is a slander. OK. Um, now, let me go over to the book of book of Isaiah. I want to go to the 26th chapter and the 11th verse. Isaiah 26. That's a lock yeah. In verse 11, it says, Lord. When that when thy hand is lifted up, they will not see, but they shall but they shall see and be ashamed for their envy at the people. Yea, the fire of thine enemy shall devour them. Right. And this is ultimately going to come to the other nations that are coming against us. Uh, the so-called all of the, the so-called Edomites, so-called Moabite Ammonites, all of that's going to happen. But two thirds of our people is going to be ha- having that shame, man, because they got to envy at us as well. Because they got an envy because we got the truth. All right. That's what's exactly going to happen, man. All right. So it says right now they, they can't see these prophecies. They can't see the things that we're talking about. It does. It's not lining up for them, man. All right. But very, very, very much soon it's going to come to a point in time where they, they shall see, man. And they're going to be ashamed for the things that they said. They're going to be ashamed for the things that they've done. And that's why the scriptures say every idle word that a man shall speak. All right. He shall be judged, man, for those things that he say and speak. He shall have to give account thereof in the day of judgment, man. For by thy word shall thou be justified, and by thy word shall thou be con- condemned, man. All right? And this is Daniel 12 and 2. You know, we're coming into Daniel 12 and not 1 now, man. Where it's going to get deadly out here. The worst time that you've ever seen. But all of our people are, are worried about is how to live their lives and how to continuously be wicked. And how to get jabs and chips. This is Daniel 12 and 2. And many of them that are asleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. All right. That's where we were before um, this state. Right. And now we're waking up to everlasting life. Right. It says and some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Right. But they're going to wake up in the kingdom of heaven with much shame and much contempt for all of the things that they said and all the things that they've done against the word of Heavenly Father. So and how is this going to happen? Because he's about to start exposing y'all, man. 
We're seeing all of these people collapse, man. We're seeing all of these little organizations that are lifted up the head, all these people that are uh, scoffed against the word. The Lord is smiting them down one by one, man. And these you Israelite groups, man, y'all time is coming too. You know, ain't like, you know, you would think it would be obvious. Ain't no reason why anybody should be following uh, Sakari anymore. And it's no reason why anybody should be following ISUPK anymore. Nobody should be following IUIC either, man. They got a body on their hands. They supposedly they murdered a girl, man. You know, men have told you came out and confessed. I was a part of their group about how they got over on people like the guy called the Pocket and how they robbed from people and done certain things. You would think, you know, what I'm saying we don't have that type of slander that's going down in Great Millstone, man. And to why do you have Bashmi Al Shah for that? That's because his order over here is understanding, his brotherhood, his knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, and his love for the body and love for this word. Right? But they don't have that in these other camps. They say, take the jab. Go ahead, take the chip. Yeah, it's all right to call on whatever name you want. But if you haven't gotten the wisdom to understand the difference, hey, the Lord ain't dealing with you, man. Or you listening to all camps so you can learn a little bit from everybody. Now, granted, if you run across a video and you add something to your arsenal, cool. All right? But at the end of the day, they ain't got it, man. And the Lord is about to start airing all that. He's been airing them out for years, but the Lord, by, by, it says little by little, right? But it's going to come a time these, these, these prophecies are going to get real major real soon, man. And we're going to start seeing these people collapse left and right. And do you think we're going to bat an eye? Nah, man, because we, 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 we warned the people. We told you what was coming. We told you what to do to change your ways, right? This is Jeremiah 6 and 15. And this is talking about you Israelites. It says, were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. Therefore, they shall fall among them that fall at the same time. At the, excuse me. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. You see, were they ashamed when they committed these abominations, when they were doing wicked? No, they were not ashamed at all, man. It says they were not at all ashamed. So because they act this way. All right. The Lord said, neither could they blush. You know, usually when you you be ashamed or embarrassed, you might blush a little bit. It means you like you get embarrassed. Your your, your skin get a little lighter. Your your blood come out in your cheeks. It says they didn't even blush, man. It says they they just uh, we wicked. You know what I'm saying? Just we we went along with it. They no had no sense of shame in doing their wickedness, man. Go and commit adultery and have no shame. You matter of fact, they'll go and celebrate it and say, hey yo, you know. Be like future. I, I I popped his woman in Gucci flip flops, man. You know, that ain't something you brag about. That ain't something you need to be doing in the first place. So when you get when you when the Lord visits your ass and you fall, you know that you've been warned, man. And you all your dirty dirty laundry gonna be aired out. In the meantime, all you people's dirty laundry gonna get aired out. And when you getting judged and martial law, we laughing at you. And mainly when the missiles come down, man. All right, because you gonna feel you gonna that's the most uh, vulnerable you're ever going to feel in your life. I, and, and Lord willing, uh, me and me and the brothers, all right, getting beamed up during that day. But I could just imagine the amount of vulnerability that you feeling knowing that missiles are about to come down to you and destroy you. And there is absolutely nothing that you can do to be saved from it. If you have been, because you know, you've done nothing to serve you. How about Shamel Shah? That's a treacherous feeling. It's a, it is a terrible thing to fall into the hands of the living power, man. All right? And so people aren't understanding this. People are doing what they want, doing what makes them feel good, taking hold on their flesh, not serving the Lord. All right? So everybody's getting aired out. All right? From the least to the greatest out of these uh, wicked people. All right? Starting with Esau, Edom. And y'all been following after him from too long, man. This is 2 Thessalonians 3 and 14. It says, um, and if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man and have no company with him that he may be ashamed. You see? So when y'all ask us, oh, well, why can't we all get along? Why can't we all do this? The scriptures say, hey, you got to note that man. If you don't obey the words of this epistle, if you don't obey the words of these scriptures, all right, are these letters, these books, all right. It says, note that man and have no company with him. That's a cold cut for all of that. Let's get together and kumbaya nonsense, man. It says that he may be ashamed and that's what's going to happen. 
right? One going to be issue because the scriptures say uh, one shall be in the field, one taken and the other left. Right. And so we, we ain't even supposed to be around y'all, man, because being being around y'all, y'all got spirits and demons on y'all. But y'all going to be ashamed in that day, man. OK, that's what that's what's going to come down, man. Now, let me go to the, the book of Romans, man. Lord is airing all y'all out, man. And that's what we hope that the air, the times that we had to air out, we're, we're confessing our faults one to another, confessing our faults to the Lord. And we're not doing them anymore. They, hey, you know, they were talking about Brother Polite. They said it, they start, they're going back and looking at his history. And they said, because usually people that do things like this, this there there's this is a repeated crime. You know what I'm saying? At his age, the, there are odds that he's done this to other women before other younger women before. So they're going back and they're digging deep to find out about them. Yeah, we've done wicked things in the past, too. But we've asked you how about Shmuel Shai to forgive us of those things. We ask God to forgive us. But now y'all got to deal with these court systems, man. You know, yeah, it's a couple brothers that got to deal with stuff that happened in the world or false allegations and things like that. But hey, at the end of the day, the Lord is the one who's going to give you that ultimate exemption, that ultimate pardon. All right. That's where it's got to come from. This is Romans chapter three and verse four. It says, um, God forbid, yea, let the most high be true. But every man of liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. You see, so it says every man shall uh, give account thereof in the day of judgment. We shall all sit in the judgment seat of Hamashiach, man. We all got to be judged. All right. But we hope that we're judged so we may overcome. It says that we might as overcome when thou art judged, which means we can not be judged and get condemned. That when we judge, the Lord can say, OK, hey, because when you go before a judge, what they say, either you're going to be innocent or you're going to be guilty. Right. There are other little pleas in there, but ultimately innocent or guilty are the main two. And so we want to be found blameless. We want to be innocent before the eyes of Yahweh by Shemel Shine and not be condemned to missiles. All right. Because that's what's about to happen, man. OK, so it says, let the most high be true and every man a liar. So we ain't listening to y'all nonsense because all y'all doing is y'all straying our people in the wrong direction. Tell them to get the jab. Tell them to do this. Tell them to do that. Tell them to take the chip. The MOTB is, is philosophy, you know. Uh, and uh, Elder Gashawama brought out earlier, I believe, Revelation 16, when it goes into that incurable wound. You know, uh, he got it in NLT and man, I forget exactly what it says off the top of my head, but roughly paraphrasing, it basically had an inclination that is something that had to be put inside you, man. Right. Revelation 16 and two, it says, and when the, and the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth and therefore a noisome and grievous sore upon the men, which had the, the, uh, MOTB and upon them, which worshiped the image, worshiped his image, you know? And it basically said it was something that you that uh that you knew it had damage had to come from the inside, man. You know, like Apostle Tar was going into this to this ulcer, man. Something that can't be healed or cured. You know. And the main thing you're not gonna be able to cure ultimately, not only is your body because you're gonna get destroyed in that that lake of fire by the missiles. But you can't cure your salvation with the Lord. The only time that two thirds are going to be cured is after that fire occurs. And then they're reborn in the kingdom of heaven, man. All right. This is uh, uh, Romans 2 and 15. It says, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness and their thoughts demean while accusing or else excusing one another and the day when the most high shall judge the secrets of men by Yahweh Shai Mashiach, according to my gospel. You see, so the Lord said he's going to judge the secrets of men, man. That's dirty laundry right there. All the shit you thought you was hiding, everything that you thought you was going to get away with, man. His eyes are 10,000 times as bright as the sun. He see all of that, man. And y'all people think they're going to be exempt. You're going to be exempt from judgment. The only people going to be exempt from judgment are the people who have that Tawa, man, that mark of exemption. OK, the elect. Those are the only people going to be exempt from the judgment of Yahweh by Shemel Shah. This is um, Sirach 16. Uh, I started 11. It says, and if there be one stiff necked among the people, it is a marvel if he escaped unpunished. 
for mercy and wrath are with him. He is mighty to forgive and to pour out displeasure. You see the balance of the heavenly father. But he says, it's, it's a marvel if you have a wicked man escape on punishment. All right. But it says mercy and wrath are with him. So he's a God of mercy and he's a God of wrath. He said he's mighty to forgive, but he, he'll pour out displeasure too. He'll let you know that he's upset, man. It says as his mercy is great, so is his correction also. See, everybody likes to believe that Heavenly Father is just all about forgiveness. He's about correction and he corrects through judgment. It says on oh, the next sentence says he judges a man according to his works. The sinner shall not escape with his spoils and the patience of the godly shall not be frustrated, man. You see, so the sinner is not going to escape with his spoils, man. All right. Esau ain't getting away. You two thirds ain't getting away. You conscious community ain't getting away. You wicked Israelites ain't getting away. You heathen nations ain't getting away. You're going to get judged according to your works because all y'all Israelites, you wanted to be wicked. And you heathen, you were wicked by the things that you've done to the Israelites. And the Heavenly Father is going to have a sore and grievous punishment. And I, I got to mention this. Me and one of the brothers, um, we went to the gym the other day. And there was this, this Edomite in the sauna. Just like I, we weren't even giving the man eye contact. We were like looking down and away from him the whole time. And he was talking about how he was a uh, police officer and all this kind of stuff. And he said the black guys weren't getting the wars like us. But they would tell me, oh, little Jew boy, shut up. He's an Amalekite, number one. But basically his story after it got done, I was vexed that I had to leave. Uh, I was vexed. I didn't even want to talk to him or listen to him. The man came outside, kept trying to talk to us. I just walked away from him. Because I didn't want to speak because if I would have spoke, I would have said something out of line. So, uh, when I, I would have said something truthful. But most of the time I try to be pe at peace with all men and I try not to bring up the truth in unnecessary situations. Um, but after thinking about it, I was like, man, this man is he knows that he's going into slavery. A part of his spirit knows. And so now he's there in that spirit of wanting to apologize now. I'm like, he was low-key trying to apologize or trying to make it seem like he was cool with black guys and looked out for him. And why did he do that? It's because they know they're about to be under a grave sentence, man. They're about to get a grave judgment. And they want to be all right when we become the rulers. Like, oh, yeah, you remember when we was in the sauna and I told you about, man, hell no. You was a demon. You was a demon. And like I said to the brother, if he cared so much, why didn't he? If he got awards, he said the black guys did more than he did and were more deserving of the, of the awards, but the black guys didn't get it. I said, well, if he was really a part of a team, if they were really a unit, and I don't know if it was it was war and uh, cops, I think. But if you if you were really part of a unit, then you should have said, well, I don't I don't want one unless they're getting one too. That's what a team does, right? You know, Yahweh Shah said he's coming to give his whole team crowns. He didn't say, yeah, I'm going to give only um, 60,000 uh, men of the Lord uh, crowns. He said, I'm going to give all 144,000 crowns, right? No, and, and that's because he's a God of mercy. He, he, he shows the whole team love. But Esau, Edom, he don't give a damn about him. He, he probably go home and call us niggas anyway. He probably left that them niggas in there wasn't even listening to me. You know, you ain't fooling nobody, man. You getting aired out too. And that's why the scriptures say your skirts shall be lifted, man. Esau getting exposed left and right. This is, um, and this is the, uh, I think this is going to be my last precept. Actually, I got probably one more after this I'm going to get. This is uh, Sirach 35 and verse 18. Whew, let me start at 17. It says, the prayer of the humble pierced the clouds. Until it come nigh, he will not be comforted and will not depart till the Most High shall behold to judge righteously and execute judgment. And see, that's when our happiness is going to come, man. All right. When his, the righteous judgment comes down and he, he execute judgment upon these people. Right. And we pray our, our we are the humble and we pray that our prayers are reaching and piercing the clouds, man. All right. It says for the Lord will not be slack. Neither will the mighty be patient toward them till he have smitten and sundered the loins of the unmerciful. And repay vengeance to the heathen till he have taken away the multitude of the proud and broken the scepter of the unrighteous. And see, that's what's going to happen. He's going to take away the power from you people, man. All right. He says, smitten and sundered the loins of the unmerciful. Them Edomites, man. The repay the vengeance to the heathen. All these other nations going into slavery. 
It said broken the scepter of the unrighteous, man. Taking y'all power away. Y'all think because y'all got a pedestal and people listening, y'all. Y'all think y'all got something going for yourselves. It's about to go down real soon in Babylon, America. It says, till he have rendered to every man according to his deeds and to the works of men according to their devices. Till he have judged the cause of his people and made them to rejoice in his mercy. You see? So he's about to, the Lord's about to do a lot of judgment. All right? And he's going to render you according to your deeds, man. So pray to the Lord that your deeds have been righteous in the eyes of Yahweh Bashem Yashah. That you have been doing the thing. The things that he's asked and required of you. I'm going to wrap it up with this. This is 1 John 2 and 28. And now little children abide in him that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Right? So we want to be, we want to have confidence when the Lord appears and not have shame like these people are going to have. Because he's about to air all their asses out real soon, man. So, hey, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I want to give all the praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rechakodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And peace and mercy to the house of David. Until next time, Shalom.